right, there we go. Hey everyone, Richard Carlton here. Welcome to another great day of FileMaker training at fmtraining.tv. I'm the creator of fmtraining.tv where you can learn all about the FileMaker platform and learn how to build better FileMaker applications for you, your customers, your organization. This broadcast is completely free to everyone and is being broadcast in high definition to Discord, YouTube, and to Twitch. This broadcast is being recorded, which is really great. Of course, we might clean up the recording a little bit. So if we make a malfunction during the live stream, then of course we reserve the right to clean that up on the recording later on. However, because it's a live broadcast, we encourage you to ask questions. In fact, some people get aggravated when there's this dialogue with you and we ask questions. I, I, we want questions. If you have a question, odds are other people have the question too. And so I want to thank everyone for logging in, Ken and TK and Dave, Dave One, Dave Learning, uh, Ed, uh, Elzo, uh, Carol, Jake, Mike, all of you, welcome once again to another great broadcast. Now, as a reminder, if you want to check out the upcoming broadcast, go to fmtraining.tv, press the left tab for the live button. You can see the upcoming broadcast schedule. That's pretty awesome. Additionally, if you want to help support this channel, right? We always say this, uh, this broadcast is brought to you by fmtraining.tv, bringing you the greatest and the most entertaining FileMaker training videos available. So the idea is that if you want to help support the channel, make sure you check out our on-demand video bundles. We have videos that cover the latest version of FileMaker. We have videos that cover the deploy course. In fact, we used to sell the courses individually anymore. It's just much simpler to sell a complete bundle for a low price. We do this on an annual basis. So if you buy one of the bundles, that really helps support the channel. It ensures that we can keep coming back every day because this broadcast actually takes a lot of money to run. The people here don't work for free. Welcome to another awesome FileMaker Train Day. I'm Richard Carlton, creator of FMTrain.tv, where we're always trying to help people out and make their lives as awesome as possible with the FileMaker platform. Those of you who started us at the top of the hour saw us working with Ed, trying to figure out an issue with some PDFs. Uh, one of those issues in life where Doing it kind of verbally won't work because we need to see what's going on. And so a lot of times if you have a tech support issue um, and you have a question you want us to solve, it's better to email us at support at RC Consulting. And then um, in an ideal world, if it's kind of a overly interesting kind of problem, we may ask to do a screen share remote control and like look at that issue with you. Um, so anyway, today we do have Nick Hunter. We are on this topic today. Nick, are you there? Well, he was there. Where are you, Nick? I'm here. He's there. So I totally screwed Nick up because we were talking about PDFs and rendering PDFs and how they play through interactive uh, viewers. And and I, I just, I guess I'll leave the conversation real quickly here. Just saying that when you view a PDF through a, through an interactive, um, interactive container, it's going to view differently than it views anywhere else. Um, it's not going to be typically the same. It's generated by different software. And so the behavior won't be the same. It, the the PDF will be the same, but the way it's, you know, like thumbnails and other little capabilities and copy and paste and highlight and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> it'll be different than Adobe Acrobat. It'll be different than the preview application on the Mac. All these video uh, PDF players are a little different. So we're going to re recommend to Ed uh, schedule a little bit of time with our one of our coaches. Um, and we always offer a free hour of coaching for everyone. Um, and uh, people who want more than a help of one hour free hour, then they get to pay for that privilege. Nick is here. Today is an ad hoc. For those of you who are tuning in on this conversation from Claris, uh, we ended up covering all the material yesterday we wanted to cover. So today is new material. So we call the Nick Hunter, who is here. Um, and Nick is going to be covering error capture. And we had several people of you ask questions. And I want to thank Trixie, AKA the her real name is Megan. Megan did a great job. She wrote up an email, which we greatly appreciate. I'm assuming, I don't have Discord running over here. I've got to fire it up. But um, she did a great job of writing us an email and outlining the questions, kind of like from a beginner standpoint, error capture. I don't understand when I need it, why I need it and when it's important. I think it's really, because uh, when people first say error capture, they think, oh, there's this, all these line, hundreds of lines of code or my script or whatever, and I should error capture after every line. No. And so one of the things today we're gonna talk about is really when do you need to use it 
and how to stay out of trouble. Right, Nick? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm um, taking over. Uh, thank you, everyone, to, for joining us, uh, joining, joining us today uh, for this uh, webinar. So, um, so I was aware about the, the topic yesterday, so I, I prepared myself as best as, as I could. Uh, but uh, anyway, the, the errors, error captures, all of this is part of my everyday life. So I have no problem of talking about it because uh, without this, I, can, I cannot code. It's, it's not possible. Yeah, that means you cannot, um, uh, let's say you have a house, okay, and you have a problem in the house. And, and if you're not aware about what the problem is, you don't know who to call, a plumber, electrician. We, we, I don't know, if it's a leak, you don't call the electrician. Uh, but if you have a, a, a panel, electrical panel on fire, you need to call the, the firefighter first Okay, and then the nutrition, but first the firefighters, right? So you need to know the cause of the trouble. Okay. Most of the time, uh, there's troubles happening when you when you code something that you can see. Uh, it's not visual. Sometimes you have a, a visual coming back, but sometimes you have no visual. Pretty much, you execute something and you have nothing coming back. So, what the nothing could be? because you have no feedback, okay? So to get the feedback, you need to track the feedback. That's what we have. We call that in a, in a, in a computer development, uh, not only the pharmacal development, but the, compu the computer can offer uh, expertise, field of expertise, they call that tracking. Okay? So you, you're going to track the trouble. Fortunately, since the beginning of time uh, of the computer, of the computing, um we get error codes you know we already we you know we um we always had these uh errors coming like for example on the pc uh uh you know i the first time i used a pc in my life i got a fatal error that means death it's fatal it's gone it's over it's dead okay that's the first error i got and then I said, okay, this is not a computer for me. Okay. So, um, and so you got, you got the point here, right? So now in FarmMaker, if you don't know how to track the errors, there's no way you can go to the, to the, to the top level of development. Why? Is because you can't adjust uh, very precise, like a Swiss clock, okay? You can have a, a, a clock made in China at, for two bucks, or you can have those fancy, nice um, tourbillon kind of for, uh, you know, um, uh, how they call that complication, uh, multi, -co multi complication Swiss, Swiss clock, uh, where, you know, the watch, Swiss watch, and uh, it's a marvelous of engineering. But to go there, you need to know how to track the errors and how to play with the errors in your, uh, in your benefits. There's multiple reasons why you need to track the errors. First, uh, it helps making your code more efficient because you can then track the problem and write, uh, 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 write, the diff write the code that will overcome the issue when it comes. Because sometimes it's important. When there's an error, you do this, when there's no error, you don't do it, you know? So you can adjust your code doing this. And then you can use the errors, and that the most, the, the biggest benefit of this is to debug your problems. You know, when something is, when, most of the time we have problems with Farmaker when something is not happening. I always have this question, people calling me, hey, Nick, he's not doing this. Okay, I understand, but when he's not doing it, when he's doing, what he's doing? When he's not doing, what he's doing? Because he's always doing something, right? So, so long story short, I'm going to, uh, I have a list here of topics, right? And, uh, and uh, so uh, made by uh, Trixie, Megan, Megan Ench, uh, Trixie, that she's here. So I'm going to walk through that and point by point and answer the, the, the question. So the first question here, the first topic of this uh, session today, the general, the general rule, uh, you know, of knowing which capture 
and uh, what capture is and when. Okay, so pretty much you want to know which errors will come uh, for which part of Farmica. So there's two major errors type. Okay, in farm types, in uh, error types in Farmica two, syntax errors and runtime error. So let me explain. Those are the, those are the, the, the official terminology of FileMaker. Syntax errors and runtime error. No, nothing to, it's not, nothing to do with the runtime, the FileMaker runtime, no, no, no. What they call runtime is when something happening. It's a, pretty much a script. Within the script, when, when an error happen uh, following script steps, they call that runtime error, okay? When something happened with the syntax, like you type a code, you know, you type a code, uh, a formula, you know, calculation, and something wrong in the calculation, they call that a syntax errors, okay? So, and it's, it, it can happen. You can have a syntax errors um, very easily in Farmaker, even though it sounds impossible for you to get that, but trust me, it is possible, and I'm going to show you. Okay, so that's the two major errors, type or errors you can have in Farmaker. Okay. So let me share my screen real quick for now. Uh, I want to show you uh, what, what I'm talking about here. So here you have the error code. You find them, you find them in, the, in, the, you know, in, the, in, the, in the help here, uh, error codes, and you type this, and then you have Farmaker error code, and you get them. They virtually group them uh, by by groups, you know, they, they they gather them by group. For example, those arrows here, okay, are what I call the 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 beginning, the the genesis of Farmaker. Those codes were the first code, the first errors they they first implemented, you know. Uh, so this one thirteen file or object is in use. We have this one plenty of time. Um, you know, when you try to to open a file that is open already open with another farmaker, so demonstration. Uh, I'm opening. Uh, I have 19 here, and I'm try and I'm going to try to open this file, the same file um, uh, that I'm I have opened with a farm here. This is what I get. Oh, it's it's not. I get this error, right? Error. The currently is in use. But if I have a Farmaker file and I have an open, uh, you know, a script that says open the file that is already open in another Farmaker, I will have an uh, error 13. Okay, so you got the point here. So those are, those are they don't have many things in common, just that they are the most gener gen generic error possible. You know, file is read-only. This is, this is happening all the time to me too, you know, especially when you open a file from a, from a from a, Im a disk image or something like that, you have an error six coming. Uh, command is invalid. Oh, command is unknown. This one is really, really, really uh, happening all the time, and I'm going to explain you why. So, uh, command is invalid. This one, you you got this one at least once in your life. Command is invalid. You know, which doesn't mean anything, but it's 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 um it's uh, it's important to know. So. So this you have this group, and then suddenly, boom, we switch from 21 to 100. And here, you can see, during the life of FileMaker, they start using the errors more and more and more and more. And then they try to do something to group them by category. For example, here you notice something. Something struck you as at odd immediately. 100. 101, 2, 3, 4, they're all about something missing. Missing, 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 missing. Okay, just this one, the 111, I don't know why it said it, repetition is invalid, but still, uh, the, it's all about missing, missing, missing. And then it stops at 118 to go to 130. And here you have two little ones, 30 and 31. It's all about the file itself, you know, the damage file, you know. And the packs, the, the language pack, you know. So this is all about the file itself on, on the hard drive. And then, oh, everything 200, 201, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, you know, all of those, all of those until here. It's all about 
access, you know, cannot be modified. Field access is denied. Record access is denied. No record. You can have, doesn't have a low print access. No access to field. You see? You don't have enough privilege to access the thing. You don't have password privilege to do this. Okay, you understand. Password expired. User account is inactive. So, 200, it's all about privileges. Right? It's all about privileges. Then we switch to 300. And then you can see we change topic here. Is is from here to here? It's all about users, okay? Uh, something the layout is used by another user. The record, uh, you know, so, so the record modification ID doesn't not okay. So the trans the transaction transaction could not be logged because of communication error. It's all about uh, the records and the table being in use or being not accessible or whatever, okay? Or be locked okay here it's all about fine the 400s it's all about fine all about all of this the 410 and four until here all the 400s it's all about fines fine catcher and empty no record fine that the two the 400 and the four, 401 is the one i'm using the most the specific select field is not matched the the field lookup which a lookup the lookup is a fine, but it's another kind of fines. You know, you know what I mean. The sort order is invalid, which is also, let's say, it's not about find. It's about it's about set um, record um, uh, font set. Okay, it's about font set. The order is invalid. Number of record exceed number of record that can be omitted. Blah blah blah. You know, import order, export order, right, whatever. It's all about font set more than fines. Okay. It's all about a group of records, okay? Then you have the 500 uh, doesn't exist, you know. So this is all about validation. Uh, you see, meet the validation, 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 validation. Okay, you understand this is all about validation. Validation of data, the, the related use. Okay, so now you know how to, how to navigate there. Okay, you know how to navigate. Uh, you understand now why they they did this. You know, you 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 go from six or three to seven hundred because you change topic, and they wanted to give them to to let them the possibility to increase the amount of of errors in that group. Okay, what I don't understand why they didn't do the group. Why they, why we don't have a subcategory here? Say okay, those errors are for this. Those errors for that. You know, that will be helpful. I don't understand what they don't do. For example, the 711 is all about uh, SQL. That's for Kyle. Uh, that's for Kyle. That's all. Kyle's error. We can, they could say that. Kyle. 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 Not Carl. Kyle. Kyle. Yes. Kyle. Kyle. But uh, pretty much what, what, I, what I'm doing here when I, when I need this, uh, uh, you know, in all my developments, I have a, I import the list. I can give you the error code list. I have them. I have a Farmaker file with all the lists, all the codes. Cool. So I, I, I mean, I have a table errors, okay, and I have the errors inside the, my Farmaker. So then I can, uh, what I can do is, uh, let me show you, um, because I can link, um, uh, hold on. I can link, I can use relationship to have the errors. See, I have all the errors here, okay? So in, 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 a, in a record. So that means I know, so I, I know when, when that happened, I know I can get the, the result from here, okay? So yeah, the, the custom function is the same thing, but uh, the custom function could be a, a little bit big because, you know. So we, we, we saw that we have two kind of, we have two kinds of errors, okay? We have the syntax errors and we have the runtime errors, okay? Most of them are addressed directly by FileMaker, okay? For instance, let's say I'm going here and I want to have a, I have a calculation here. And, and I'm doing this, get uh, current date and I, and I omit, or what's the name? I omit a parenthesis. Farmaker will address that for me and say, hey, hey, no, no, there's, there are more parentheses that are, you know. But this error here, it's an error 1207. 
this error. This. So how I know that? Because um, believe it or not, you can you can evaluate calculation outside of the calculation dialog. Okay. So here I have a multiple. I have a fields and re I have records here, and I have here a pharmacal calculation here inside the field. And then I have an evaluate command. So it's very simple uh, how you do this. And this is something you should learn, by the way. Um, I have this expression field. This is where I have my, cal my calculation, my function. And I say, evaluate this. It's 12, see? Because uh, I ask for get current date, right? If I change, sorry. See here, you, so you, you look for this, right? This guy. So if I change next the next record, it says that's an exclamation exclamation point because it's that's an error. This I said get username is Nicholas Hunter. Here I said application version pro nineteen one two. Here I said system platform that system platform one. Here I said get system version ten fifteen dot six etc. Okay. So, and you can have uh, one plus one, it will say two, right? Uh, it will evaluate the calculation, right? You can also call fields. Uh, you can put a complete calculation inside the field and evaluate the calculation outside of the calculation dialog. Okay, so that's something you need to know. So now I have a button here that says evaluate. Okay, I evaluate this. And let's say I'm doing this. Okay, so this in a calculation dialogue, Pharmaco would have insult me and say, "Okay, hey, doesn't it's not valid, right?" But here he said exclamation point. I don't know what it is, right? So I know this is the twelve o four. Okay, twelve o four. So what the twelve o four? Twelve o four. You go there. You go to my error code here. Twelve o four. Okay, number, text, constant, field name, or parenthesis expected. Okay. See, so it's it doesn't work, okay? Because it, see, if I do this, error is twelve o seven. You remember I told you that was a twelve o seven. It's a twelve o seven. What's it? To, oh, unbalanced parenthesis. See, it's there, right? It's it's it, it's it's correct. So now I have no error. Zero is no error. Okay, zero zero is no error. That means everything okay. Everything everything good. OK, so so now you know that you, you can have syntax errors in FarmMaker, even though um, so because you can have all the all the problems. So let's generate a problem. OK, let's say I have a, a new table here, uh, table two, OK, table two, and I uh, create a table. And I want to link the two tables together. So primary key uh, with a foreign key. There's no, they put the primary key, they don't put the foreign key. Stupid people. OK, so foreign key, OK. Got the foreign key. And I remove all this sort of bleep. Uh, all this not empty, we don't care about it. Okay, so I have my foreign key, okay? So I want to link this primary with foreign key. Okay, I have a link. And now in my error here, I have a calculation calc that says, uh, the calc is uh, here, I'm going there and I want the list of uh, the table, um, you know, uh, well, whatever, you know, creation by, okay, created by. So I have a calculation here, okay? I have a calculation, that this is calculation, right? And and let's say I'm breaking something here, right? So I break this. So now my calculation here is no longer valid, okay? It won't work. It won't work anymore, okay? So if you want to know what the problem here, okay? And I know this, 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 uh, this here won't work anymore. That means uh, if I do, uh, what's the name? If I, if I, if I, let's say I, 
no, hold on. I need to I need to do this for my demonstration first. Okay. I need to do that for the demonstration. So I have a I have a portal here with whatever I have in the table. Okay. And I want creation by and the modified by. Okay. So and so and I want to you know put I put never cannot be because the field is not modifiable. Um or maybe because I break the thing here. No, it should be it should be okay. Uh let me let me um uh, Add here a name. Yeah, because I'm using one of those not, not non modifier or stupid. Um, okay, so foreign key. Okay, so now I'm good. So let's say I'm putting the name here. Okay, and here this. Okay, so I'm putting a name Nick uh, and Rick. And so I have two names here, and then I have my calculation here. Remember, my calculation here in that table was the list of whatever I put I put there, right? Okay. So let makes the let's set up let's let's put that a calculation right quick. Uh, it's difficult to put that in place because uh, okay 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 so the table name so i have the list of this okay so now uh mac if i break this if i break this the calculation is no longer valid jake sheely says nick make it a text calc not numbers what he just said yeah yeah maybe right so now i want to know what's happened here i, I don't know what happened as I, I saw this this one this was working fine and suddenly it doesn't work okay so I want to evaluate this, you know. So evaluation errors of this. I want to know what happened here, okay? That's what I want to know, okay? So, and uh, yeah, because now it's broken. Evaluation, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, look, um, it's very, I, I wasn't ready for that. So I, I knew I would, I would be, but anyway, um, the evaluation error, that I have another way to explain to you because it's, it's kind of complicated to put that in place. I'm sorry for that. But you have an evaluation errors. Okay, so... I'm sorry. We'll have to demand a refund from everyone who paid you. For yeah, this. no problem. We send a, a zero dollar check. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the, what's the name? The, when you want to evaluate a calculation, l let's say you have a situation where you have a calculation that is broken. Um, and you want to and you want to evaluate the problem, okay? Uh, you do evaluation error. You use this uh, here. So uh, th this is what I, this is what I'm doing. So you evaluate the calculation and then you evaluate you evaluate the evaluation, okay? So what you do here, I have a, I have a script that have this here. Uh, you do this. You you have the evaluation error. And you put whatever you want here. For example, let me let let me do you a a, a, a demo here. Okay, I try I try again to do a demo. I want to evaluate ev evaluation errors. Okay, and I have an expression, um, and I do one. My expression is one plus one minus. Okay, that's my evaluation. And I said no no errors still. Um, it's uh, the best. The best way is to use a calculation like this, and you say you, you evaluation error on this. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I need to evaluate this. Sorry. Okay. Evaluate. Okay. Evaluate. You evaluate this, and then you have a one o four, twelve o four. Okay. So you have a you have a you know what error you have. If you if I if I fix the problem, I have zero error. But here I have a problem because I had this. But if I do this, I have no error anymore, right? So you see what happened here, right? So you get, you get, you, the, okay. You have, I, I told you, I, I told you at the beginning, you have two kinds of errors, syntax and runtime. Runtime is script. When you want, when you, when, when you want to get an errors from a, a script, you use get, uh, you know, uh, you have the get last error. Okay, that is the get last error is coming from 
you know, set variable, um, um, set variable, and you say error, okay, and you say here, get last error. This is how you get the last error of a runtime. You run something and you have an error. I'm going to show you that, okay? This is more, is easier to demonstrate. But if you want to evaluate a syntax error, you need to use the, you need to use this instead, which is evaluation error, okay? You have a get last error, and then you have evaluation error, and you say whatever you want to evaluate, what error you want to get you want to get, okay? You point to the script, to the, maybe if I do that, maybe I will have the error here, I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's difficult to, because we typically we don't need too much, you see zero error, okay, never mind. But anyway, um, it will tell you a field missing, things uh, uh, things missing, you know, when you have a, a break, a broken uh, link, but I'm going to show you something that is will be more in, uh, a variable for you, okay? Oh, I delete the script. Okay, great. Uh, evaluation error because I'm going to sh I'm going to give you this uh, field, by the way, this uh, file. Sorry. Uh, evaluation error. Bum 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 bum. Okay. So I'm back. So now let me do a demonstration about why we need to uh, why we need to uh, um, what's name? Uh, address that errors problem. So, uh, a beginner guide. So let me uh, go back to the my topic here. A beginner guide to error capturing. When up, what happened if we don't? Why we do it? Okay, why we do it? Okay, that's a good question. Why we do it? Let's say here. Let me clean up this. Let's say here I have a search box. Okay, a search box that says, okay, I want a. Uh, System, okay, I have two with system. This one and this one, system platform and system version, okay? If I, if I'm two with system. Uh, I want a field, for example, okay? There's no field, okay? Okay. So I want to track this. I want the system to tell me if I do some, if I put something that doesn't exist, I want this. I want, a, I want my own dialogue that shows me the error, okay? And the error is 401, which is, is no match rec no match found. Let's check, 401, 401, remember, 401, no record match re the request, okay? No match found, okay? So, this is 401. Now, I want, let's say, you see, I have two, uh, let's say I'm, I'm searching for system. So system, I have two record found, this one and this one. But let's say now I remove everything from the search box, and when I click outside the search box, which is empty, I want everything to be selected. Bam. All. Seven. Show all. Do it again. Sys. I tap sys. I tap return. Okay. Research. Okay, so I'm going to interrupt. Trixie asked a question, and then this question has been coming up. So she asked, is error capturing and error trapping the same thing, or are they different? She's screaming this. Ah! Well, is error capturing and error trapping the same? I don't know. I never heard about the error trapping, so... Okay, okay. I, in my mind, they mean the same thing. According to Ellen, in the world of wildlife, if you're trying to capture an animal that doesn't want to be captured in, in, yeah. it's trapping in, it's trapping informer error capturing has a meaning okay but error trapping we kind of do the same we we use the term loosely the same thing i think we just yeah. have to but but in farmaker error capture has a meaning there's a meaning for farmaker uh there's a special meaning for farmaker you know it's not like a uh, error capture there's a meaning okay but, okay, there's, so, but there's no error trapping, but the, that word is used in other programming languages, other places. Oh, maybe, but uh, I don't think they do the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, not... so, so error trapping is not official FileMaker, but the but but a lot of developers like Kyle, 
Um, and I sent yeah. Kyle a PM. You need to. You need to. You need yeah, to. But if, if you you let need me Kyle go, needs... I'm, I'm, I was going there. No, you're uh, out of so... time. You're way past your two minutes. You're way past your two minutes. So. I know, but we have now. We have for two months worth of uh, of uh, webinars. Okay. Yeah. If we do one every. Oh, never mind. Keep going. Yeah. So. <laughs> so how you do this? How you can? How you? How I know when there's something that is wrong i have my own record i have my own dialogue i build that dialogue okay so how i'm doing this by using error capture so the the capturing errors okay so because error capture here what did okay we need to tell you about this let's say i'm i don't have this this function set error capture on on i don't have it let's say i don't have it here what happened i have my um uh, wasn't it oh i didn't say so i have this farmaker has a out of the box um uh message for you you know no records match the fine criteria okay which is the same as this but I mean, this is mine this was mine my own i had my own message if i don't put the uh you know the farm maker if I don't put this, that means this will deactivate all the default out of the box farm maker messages. So that means during that mess, that during the execution of that script, okay, all errors will be muted, completely muted. Let's say I don't have this. Let's say I'm just doing the out of the box farm maker stuff. I'm putting that on on. If I'm doing this, no message. If I'm doing this, no message. No message, no message, no message whatsoever. Now, if I don't do this, okay, here what happened. This, boom, errors. And this here, boom, another error. The provided fine criteria are not valid and a valid request before proceeding. You see? So you have out of the box farmaker errors. But sometimes you don't want the farmaker errors to come to you because you want to personalize your own message. You want something better. So, okay? yes, you must capture them. You capture them. And then you substitute your own message or you have no message. You could do no or message. Or you have no message. Or yes. you say, okay, I don't give a damn about the message. I don't want message. And of course, I, because sometimes, you know, if you don't put the error capture, you have errors all over the place. You know, you have messages, click, or, you know, you, Farmaker is giving you 100 messages, you know. So you put the error capture. So now, playing with, playing with the errors, okay, I can play. Demonstration. Demonstration. Okay. I'm putting here my script debugger. Always in the script debugger, it shows you the last errors that the last script of the last the last step of the last script executed always um, that the last one that the last error that the the script encountered okay so that's good to know if you open if you open your script debugger you will see the last errors of the last script of the last step okay if there's any because sometimes there's no error here. So let's play a little bit. So now I'm saying, okay, I want a uh, blah like this. I click here, I start the script, and boom, there's an error here. Last error, 401. No records match the requests. Okay, so this is the errors. Now I have another type of errors. Boom. Oh, Find criteria are empty. Okay, so now I know that the error for one is there's no match, some, not, nothing match, and I know the 400 is when it's empty. So now I, I can, based on the behavior, I have my own response. When there's nothing found, I want a message. I want my own message because I'm better than FileMaker. I'm smarter. I'm more cuter. And everything. I'm sorry. You're not nearly as cute as FileMaker. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so I want my own message. So, so here, if I say 
blah, and I execute the script, what I have? This, this. If get last error, which is the command to, to get to take this to, you know, uh, to intercept the error, I say, okay, I want my own dialog. No, there's an error occurred for one. So I give you, see, I said, I put a message here, an error number. I typed it. I typed myself. Okay. And then it goes and it terminates the thing. Now, if there's another error coming, that means there's an error, the 400, so it's not this one. It's, it's keep the 401. Now it's a 400. Show me all. Hey, because can you, you can you hit your little, bu hey, you need to hit your little buzzy thing. Just hit it for me. Hit your buzzy thing. Hit your buzzer thing. You have your buzzer on your desk? Where's your buzzer at? All right, good. All right, cool. Buzz, yes, buzz. Okay, there's a conversation on Discord. We're not going to be able to get to errors in PSOS today, but we're asking if you want to know about errors in PSOS, and you have to buzz in for that, right? So I'm, help, uh, I'm helping you out, okay. Nick. I'm helping you, baby. We, we, we have a 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I could have done it because I'm done now. No, nah, you're not done because I haven't had my little talk yet. My talk about oh, okay. errors. Okay. Right? We haven't got there yet. So yeah. So let me know okay. when you're done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Try, so, try to mean, give yeah. try to give me more than twelve seconds. That would be really great. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's pretty much uh, because the the piece was the next step, the the, the next step. But uh, it's not very uh, really capturing errors on pieces is piece of cake. Uh, so uh, I know where the difficulty is. Now that you understand this, okay, now that you know how to play with this, that will be interesting. Because let's say you, now you know how to get the errors. I have another kind of errors, for example. And that a, a, a kind of error that you can have. Um, what's the name? Uh, I go there, I go to another file. You, you can intercept any kind of error here. Just the last error, will will capture the last error of this if i put something else here like this is broken because it will it will take the last error of this one which is not this cannot this cannot return any error okay so if i do this now and if i execute the script debugger it won't work because the last error was 4 1 but here there's no error so now nothing works because the last error is really the last error so let's say Let's say I want this to happen. I want to capture the error of this, then having the BIP, and then I want the errors uh, be after the BIP. I want this to happen. I want BIP, BIP, and BIP. I want three BIPs. Uh, actually, I need to pause the pause here. Otherwise, you won't do it. Stupid FileMaker. So I want three BIPs, okay? And I want the thing to happen. But if I'm doing this, the last error would be this, the pose, you know, so it, there's no errors there. The error was there. So you did this. You take, you, you, you create a variable, okay, error, and you put the get last error there. Guest last error there, okay? So now you have a variable that happened here. So now instead of saying, so, and this is evaluating the errors just after it happened. So now, it, you guessed it, it's very simple. You point this to the variable. And then you have it, demonstration. And then I have a question from uh, Trixie when you're ready. Yeah. So you click here. Trixie say, changed her picture, much better yeah. picture. Is your hair that, really that awesome? I showed that to my wife. She goes, that hair is really hard to do that way. That's, she has some really amazing hair. So yeah, go ahead. OK, so you go there and you say, OK, the error, the error happened. I'm, I'm taking the errors, you know, uh, in a variable. So now I have a variable with a four one. Okay. And I do my beep, 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 beep. Okay. And then I said, if it's four one, show dialog. Okay. So this is partially what you need to do when you use our friend the pieces that's what you need to do okay uh on uh, you cannot use straight this because you want to collect 
you want a error collector system okay and then you want the when the, all the errors got collected you want to send them back to the or to the script that has been initiating the pieces okay so i gave you pretty much everything you need to know for the for the, but i'm going to show you the piece of things no um, not right now not right now no right now not right now all right that's a different okay. event so Trixie says questions? well she has a question but then i need to kind of i need to i think if i articulate a couple things it will help a little bit but Trixie says will there be circumstances where you will be error capturing a lot of errors uh in scripts or will you modify your script so you don't capture as much actually okay um Sometime, you know, I'm using, I don't care about the errors. You know, I, I mean, I don't care if errors happen. For example, some people, you know, I, I know, Richard, you don't like it, but um, what I'm doing sometime, I have a script, okay, and you know that you need to refresh objects. You know, for example, I need to refresh object, object, uh, or I, I need to refresh Nick, you know, the object Nick. I need to refresh sometime in another, the, the script is the same, the script is exactly the same, but just the name of the of the of the of the of the, of the object. I need to refresh. It's Rick, you know. Depending on where I am, uh, you know, uh, Paul in and it's, you know. Yeah, I have no or, problem with that refreshing specific object. And, I think that's a good idea. Well, I don't know, no, no. but I, okay. Sometime, sometime, okay. So I have a script happening. And sometimes I'm launching the script from project. This is the object I need to refresh. Mm -hmm. If I launch the script from a, from a contact, this is the object I need to refresh. Right. If I launch the script from invoices, this is the, the object I need to refresh. Mm -hmm. But if I refresh this object from contact, it won't work. It will say, I don't find the objects. Um, uh, so I don't care. Yeah, I don't, don't care. You refresh, oh yeah, I couldn't find the object. Big deal, I don't give a damn. Oh, I couldn't find this one. Big deal, I don't give a damn. Oh, I found this one. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, this one, I didn't find it. Okay, big deal. I don't get it. I don't give a damn. So you, you, I don't want, I don't want to enter into a crazy 200 billion lines scripts just to, add, to avoid an error to happen. I don't give a damn. Let's the thing happening. Of course, you need this because if you don't, you have beam, error, beam, error, beam, error, beam, error. You know? So you don't want that to happen. Like you know, if if I do it, this is what you have. You uh, it doesn't say, but because it doesn't, but you have an error all the time. If yeah. I execute this, look what happened. It do this error, 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 error. Okay, yeah. you have error. Object but if I do, object. but if if let's say in this layout, I have one that that one that works. Okay, one that works. Okay, and I execute this. Uh, sorry. I execute this, it will say, okay, bam, okay, okay. Refresh Nick, no error. Oh, Rick, Paul, Tixi, errors, because there's not in the layout. But doesn't matter. It doesn't make uh, the thing to be uh, bad, you know? Right. Just, right. you don't care. So there's errors you don't give a damn about. Uh, some, you need to track them because uh, it will help, it will help you to debug your, pro your, your, your program. For example, the, uh, okay, I, I don't want to, uh, to to tell you because it will be on pesos. But on pesos, there's errors that the the most uh, the most common errors. Okay, is when you point to the wrong relationship. Yeah. yeah. And and for that, you know you know what I mean. When you yeah. go to a layout and it's not the right yeah. one. And, okay. well, let me let me let me wrap up with a couple of things. So first, I want to say thank you for everyone being here. We greatly appreciate. It. This is Trixie. I want to everyone say. Welcome to Trixie. She asked, she's a beginning FileMaker person. I can't seem to move the window. I don't know why, but there she is right there. It's pretty awesome. Uh, she is uh, doing great things with the FileMaker platform and she's doing a lot of learning. So hopefully I'm still streaming my video, but yeah, crazy awesome hair. That's really amazing. My wife goes, man, that's really hard to do like that, to do it well. Um, and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. So I might have to get the blue spray out on, on, uh, on Friday, an attempt to make my bald head blue and uh, in an effort to, you know, I can't be outdone by Trixie. So the bald guy's got to try his own uh, blue on yeah. that. So, yeah, um, yeah. and then, so let's talk about br real briefly about, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, hang on one second. Where's my, my face so I can wave at the screen here and do all that kind of stuff. So, so we can still see your screen, Nick. So, error capture, let's talk about what, how I view error capture. And it's not, not different than Nick. I'm going to articulate a little differently. It's also 
a test question in the FileMaker certification test, or has been. I have I've got to take the new test in the next like four or five days, or <laughs> yeah, because my window of taking it's uh, elapsing the the new uh, 19 test. So, um, so basically, the way I do error capture is I I turn on error capture all the time, but I only tr I only evaluate the error. So I, I air capture is on, so it's being suppressed. It basically capturing the air suppresses the air. It keeps it internal. It doesn't throw it at the user, right? I only evaluate and get the number if I get to a spot and on my development where I suspect there might be a problem. And 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 the common areas where you're gonna have a problem is on a find request. Anytime you do a find, you may not find the right record. You need to think about that. Even if you don't show the customer. Uh, a question and answer. Once again, yes, that we're still on your screen, Nick. Once again, on the question and answer, you may not you, you may not show the customer there's a problem. You may just make your own decision based upon that error capture. Maybe you don't show it to the customer at all. Like if there's no records, we're going to do this. Or if there are lots of records, then we'll go to the first one or the last one or do something like that. The other one, uh, there's another one. It's called a lock sync error. A lock sync error is where two people attempt to edit the record at the same time. So the, the, fi the file's on the server, uh, it say it's a contact database, and it's uh, Trixie is the contact person. And I go in there and I want to update her address. And Nick goes in there and wants to update her phone number. FileMaker can only allow one person to edit a record at a time. Multiple people can view it, one person can edit it. That will generate an error I think 101, I believe. Is that 101 or 301? There's the ones that, the errors I care about are 401, 101, 301. And so if you go to error codes, let's take a look at the error codes. Show me the 101. Is that the lock sync? No, it's the 301. The 301 is the lock sync. So the error means yeah. that, so, so if you get to a spot where you're setting, a, like you're, you're editing a preference record in your database, and you think that other people on a weird chance might edit that preference record as part of a script, you might want to check that you can edit it before you really write this information in there because as you write it, you assume it's working. You might want to check. So you're looking for known issues like a find that won't work. You're trying to edit a record that really can't be edited. And if two, two people try to edit Trixie at the same time, they're going to get a message. That's fine. That's, that's perfect for that. But if you're writing a script that's doing a lot of stuff, then you want to make sure you can edit that record. That's the second. You want to make sure, yeah, I'm using that a lot for that reason because you want to make sure the people knows that the thing didn't happen. Because uh, sometimes when you when you update records in, in batch, for example, or, you know, like, um, let's say you want to, 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 let's say you want to, or you have a, a student, for example, and you want to get all the students who graduated and you want to select them all and graduate them, like push them to the next level, the right. next, you know. Uh, if one is busy uh, by another user, that means that user never gets uh, switched to the next level. Yeah. Uh, and if you have two, if you have two, two students, that's okay. But if you have 2,000 students, you, st you start having problems. Yeah, right? yeah, well, yeah. So that's- So, so you, need to inform, you need to inform the user that, oh, by the way, Everything fine, but this guy, this guy, this guy didn't get updated. Correct. And you know because you collect the errors. Correct. Okay. So that's so that's so so once again people say, Well, what errors do you worry about? So once again I'm going through my errors I worry about. Finds that don't work, editing a record that I can't edit because someone else is using it. Um and the last one is when you try to go to a related record, a GTRR, this is actually on the certification test. So yeah, this is 101. And so it's 101, and, and, and it, it should say related record is missing, but what it is, you're trying to GTRR, you're using a relationship in a script of which there is no child record that you can get to or grandchild, whatever. You're trying to go through a relationship. You're trying to hop. You're like on a you're like a person on a stream. You're crossing a stream and you have the the stones on the stream, the rocks, and you're trying to hop across the river, the stream, not get wet. And you're trying to hop and you're doing it blindly and you're trying to hop and you hop into air. There's no rock there. You land in the water. That's what error 101 is. The thing is it's dangerous about it is that people assume that they've hopped and they've landed on a rock. Well, if you hop in the water, you're you're obviously wet and you know that. But but in FileMaker, you don't know you're wet. So the error 101 tells you that you have a problem. Yeah. Why is this dangerous? Because on the certification test, they point this out. They say, what will happen if you go to related record and then you issue a delete record script step? Now, 
deleting records, I think, is a generally a bad idea unless you're extraordinarily careful about doing it. If you try to do go to a related record and and if we're just hopping across the rocks, you're going to end up wet. What FileMaker does, it sees that there's nowhere for you to go and it doesn't let you attempt to jump into the water at all. And so it stops you. And so you're on the same place where you were when you thought you hopped. You're trying to hop. Yeah. You tried to hop. You're still there. And then you go, oh, run that delete record command. And so you're actually in the wrong record of a wrong table, probably, deleting a record that you have no idea. That is a test question. No joke. And so it's so I trap for anything that if it fails, you know, like trying to open a, uh, a JSON file yeah. or an API, anything yeah. where you kind of expect the likelihood of a failure, likelihood of a failure is legit. And or yeah. if you don't trap for the error and you continue running, yeah. assuming it's working, uh, you're going to melt. And that's the way yeah. I do it. So yeah, the, there's a lot of uh, things that I use myself. Um, okay, those are very important to know what happened here. Uh, that's why I wanted to take to one minute to explain because more and more and more we are going to uh, see that why because you we will have much more uh 20 pharmaco 20 21 22 that will come every six months now before it was coming every five years now it's every six months we will have a new version with new functions new things for example uh one day i was trying something uh, and uh, with a, a server, I had an old server at home uh, working with Pharmaco 16, and I wanted to execute something uh, with a file that I built with Pharmaco 19. And I was always error four. Command is unknown. Yeah, because Pharmaco 16 doesn't give it, doesn't know that command I wanted to know because 16 didn't know about this. Okay. 16 cannot know that command because it, only 19 knows that, right? So, and I was executing a PSOS. So the PSOS, it's uh, the farm, is Draco of the server that executing things, not the Draco of the clients. So I wasn't understanding why it was working perfectly locally and it wasn't working on PSOS at all. And I said, and I was getting nuts. It's because of this. So more of this. Uh, the error free more more mostly is because you try something on go that doesn't work on pro or vice versa uh and uh so and the, and the five to the command is invalid uh set field script step doesn't you know like those uh evaluate evaluation like the one i'm doing i'm doing here set field by name and stuff like that you need to know that but also there's one that is very important is this one the user cancel and that will be my last demonstration then we'll, i'll let you go um, sometime what you want to do, uh, you want to do something like that. Save record as Excel, for example. Okay. And then you do this and then you do beep and beep and beep and, you know, beep, plenty of stuff after that. After that, you have plenty of stuff. But here what happened. If you do this, okay, so, and you have this dialogue to actually to ask you, to save to save the documents and you cancel okay and then you have this right set record that be canceled do you want to continue the scripts and you want to intercept that okay so let's say cancel i don't want to so you you do what you you know you error, error capture you put an error capture that means now you won't have any errors coming you know there's no error coming but you need to intercept that because you don't want that to happen. You don't want, if that cancel, it cancel everything. So what you do, if gets last error equal one, that means cancel, okay? Okay, alt everything. You don't do, you, you stop everything, alt, you know, alt, stop, okay? So here, here what happened. So if I debug this script, here what happened. I save record as PDF or as Excel, and I click cancel. That means I have one user cancel action. Okay, if it's one, get out of here, right? So those are very important errors because that can, because if, let's say you have, okay, save records, and then you have, you know what you have? Save records, delete all with no dialogue, okay? Then you, and if, so you assume 
you assume that somebody you know uh, uh, saved the records you assume that and then you say delete but if the guy say no i don't want to save and you don't have this goodbye sayonara bye bye you know um what's the name broadway and uh, welcome or uh, you know the the retirement the retirement uh, nursing home right so it's uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, <laughs> retirement know. nursing home all right there we go all right well um we don't have time to get into too much more uh, I want to. I want to. Uh, a couple shout outs. And once again, so Trixie did a great job of asking us questions. We appreciate Jake Sheely. Everyone here, you're contributing. A lot of people talking, cockeyed optimist, etc. A lot of people, uh, MJ McRae, a lot of people on Discord, correction, uh, YouTube and Twitch on top of Discord. Nick and I really, 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 I'm going to switch back to my camera if you want, Nick. Um, Really appreciate everyone coming and showing up and asking questions. This is why it's great. It's why we don't do two-minute videos, right? Just to, like, you know, say, hey, you know, this is a, a button in FileMaker. Click, right? Cool. All right, everyone. It's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Have a good day. Appreciate it. We'll catch you tomorrow with Nick. Nick will be back in the office. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, wrong button. There we go. More importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask oh. for. Trying to rally down 10. 925 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot, goes set. Stands in, throws it left for Amendola, reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling to the 9. Oh. Slightly behind him, again he makes the grab.